So, Craig, thanks for joining us in what is um, uh, a, a pretty strange period of uh, life for Australians at the moment and for church planners and church leaders. I uh, wanted to get your brains. You're the, uh, the planning pastor at Scott's Presbyterian Church in Sydney, um, but you're also director of coaching for Geneva Push. And uh, so that's how most people on this group will know you for that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get your thoughts uh, quickly on uh, things you would say to coaching this period. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on for people uh, and we're all adjusting to a new reality at the moment. But um, keen to get your thoughts on, on a whole number of things. What, in this period, what, what are you seeing as the importance of, of that coaching relationship in this crisis? Yeah, Derek. Uh, yeah, great to be chatting at a time like this. Um, and I guess like a lot of the people watching, we've got lots of new things to uh, think about. It's a, it's a busy time for lots of people. But yeah, look, I think it's a really uh, important time to think through what it means to be a coach. Uh, I think at a time like this, we realise how important, important coaching is, how important a network is, uh, not to be there inventing the wheel by yourself, but learning from what others are doing, looking at what we're doing together, realising that no one's got it nailed down. Uh, we're all kind of just, I mean, no one's been through this before, but um, learning from each other, uh, working those things out. And so, yeah, I think coaching is um, an important thing at a time like this, but we probably want to do it slightly differently. Mm. Mm. So what advice would you be giving to coaches at this point? Yeah, yeah. So I think I want to say to the coaches in the network, firstly, we get that this is a busy time for you as individuals. And so if you need to scale back what you're doing, we understand that. You have commitments as pastors to your people. You need to think through how to respond well in those situations. And it may well be that you need to, to do less. But I guess what we want to do is be, be clear with the guy you're coaching that's what's happening. Uh, don't just go missing, but maybe communicate with him. In fact, what might actually be really helpful for the guy you're coaching at this time is not to do your regular one hour a month kind of session, but to actually touch base for five minutes each week. Maybe you want to have a phone call, designated time in the week, ask him how he's doing and just pray for him. And uh, at a time like this, that might be the, a better way to go. That'll be realistic for you, but also realistic for him. He's got lots of things he needs to scramble with at a time like this as well. So that'll be the main thing I do. I guess the other thing as a coach is we always talk about how context really matters. What is happening in your church might be different to what's happening in his church. And what I see around the place is this, uh, the COVID-19 thing is hitting different churches in different parts of Australia in very different ways. So if you're in a uh, ethnic church in Sydney, this is a, it's had a massive impact in a bunch of ways. But if you're perhaps in a regional church uh, in another state, it might feel a little more remote and you might not have uh, been in a different situation. So where I am, we have um, a significant number of our people who are actually in imposed self-isolation. They travel for work and they've come back from overseas. We have some people who've got COVID-19. Uh, we have um, a bunch of people who have been rostered, they're casual workers or contract workers, and they're now being rostered to zero hours by their workplace. And so they're thinking uh, they've effectively been made unemployed in, in the last week. We have a whole lot of other people who aren't unemployed. They're massively overworked at the moment. They're scrambling with lots of things. We have lots of people working at home. They're feeling isolated and disconnected. Um, that's our context. But when I talk with people I'm coaching, uh, yeah, the context is very different. So keep remembering what you're doing where you are in your church may not be the best thing for your planner. Some of you may need to up your empathy because it's not a big deal where you are, but it is where they are. And others of you might need to dial down a bit because it's a big issue where you are, but it may not be a big issue for them. Mm. That's good. Yep. And coaching has always been, within the network, it's been um, mm. one of the key things that we have done, strength and planners, mm. uh, and to help them uh, do what they do in a gospel-centred mm. way. And uh, one of the tendencies could be to pull back from that relationship with so much going on. 
Mm. Um, my gut feeling is this is the time when we need to lean into that in a different way, yeah, yeah. but lean yeah. more mm. strongly into that to help work through what is unprecedented challenges mm. we're facing. Um, mm. If you were going to uh, give some advice to planters uh, at this point, what would you say to them? Yeah, um, uh, I, what I'd say to them, and just to and I'll bounce back off what you just said in a moment as well, is look, um, if you're in a situation that's affected by the virus, this is an opportunity, not a problem. Uh, you need to think about that. Don't waste a good crisis. This is an opportunity to talk about how to think as Christians, how to think um, as people who see the world God's way about these kind of issues. Uh, lots of opportunities you, you, you normally have for evangelism and discipleship won't be available to you, but lots of other opportunities will be available to you. So we've asked our people who are in isolation or working from home, we've moved all of our small groups online, we've asked them to step up, step up and be more involved in praying one-to-one -one with each other than they normally would. They don't have to commute anymore, they've got more, you know, um, online's easy. And so it's created lots of significant opportunities. It's brought to the surface um, how um, we hide it most of the time, our anxieties about money, about how work is the big thing that defines us. There's all sorts of opportunities to, if we're clear and calm and think about it, uh, for the gospel where we are. So as planners, I'd say, there's lots of things that you currently do that aren't gonna work. And so be, be comfortable at stopping doing those to make space for the other things you need to do. If it's a time of opportunity, you need to be at the top of your game. You need to be at your best. So the th thing that should absolutely not drop out is prayer and reading God's word. So this morning, I've got a full day of thinking about how we run church on Sunday. It killed me to do it, but I walked into work. It takes me 30 minutes. Um, you know, it's, it's slower. I had to push back meetings to do, the, to do that. I walked into work. I listened to the Bible and I prayed on the way in. And it killed me to do it, but it's, but the busier I get, uh, the more I'm in a time of unexpected change, the more time I need to spend in prayer and reading God's Word. Don't let that drop out. Attend to your sleep and your rest, because this is a time to make the most of the opportunities and be at the top of your game. That'd be, that'd be my big thing uh, to say. That's great. Uh, we were talking. Sorry, mm, on. Okay, yeah. Just with the coaches, I'd say is... Um, as you, as you coach you guys, you might notice lots of things. You think, wow, I need, this is, that's important to coach on. Uh, you might learn lots about how your guy deals with change and crisis. Don't try and deal with all of it at once. Help him with the immediate things of this week. I mean, we don't know what's going to be like in six months' time. We don't, I mean, a month ago, what we were talking about, it's not how it's ended up. This is a time to attend to the immediate and not worry about the long term so much. But... If you're a coach, make a note of those things yourself and think, yeah, there's something to come back to there, isn't there, about um, how, how my guy thinks about change, how, where prayer fits in in a time of change. Don't try and do all of those at the moment. Help him with the immediate. And um, there's lots of time to work on those things as the dust settles. Yeah, that's good. That's excellent. Um, we're going to actually have you back. Uh, we're going to record one thing episode this afternoon, hopefully, if we can do that and install the other mm -hmm. chaos to talk, push into more yeah. about um, some of that, uh, the opportunities to present. We were talking in staff mm -hmm. meeting yesterday about some of those things mm -hmm. um, around not being opportunistic, but seeing yeah. this as mm -hmm. a unique time in yeah. our history, mm -hmm. unprecedented, where mm -hmm. people are unsettled to share the gospel with. But as leaders, uh, for these coaching relationships is key that we keep. I, I love your thought there, driving back into the word and prayer mm -hmm. as the base before just turning into pragmatic problem solvers. Uh, that's great. Um, just uh, any resources you would point people to uh, at the moment that you found helpful or they should be aware of? Yeah, look, um, there's, um, there's not a lot of, you know, tried and true resources on this kind of situation because no one's been through it before. I think the Christianity uh, Today article on churches in Singapore is a great resource. Uh, I think uh, what uh, Geneva has done on streaming church, if that's where you're going, is a great resource. Um, uh, the Pastor's Heart has, did a session last week that had Eugene Hoare, who's one of our planters, on it. 
talking about how different churches in Sydney are responding to that. Even if you're not in Sydney, I think there's lots of variety in, in what they said. They're, they're three immediate things. But I, I think the biggest resource is actually our network. So our Facebook group to, um, because I don't know what the problems are I'm gonna to face tomorrow. And sure as, sure as anything, no one's actually written a blog post on it yet. But, um, but we can actually talk and ask questions and that kind of thing's happening in the network already. Uh, this, this I think is the time when you realize how important it is to be in a network and invest in relationships in a network because this is the time when we all need it. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me give a plug as well, just as we do that, because uh, for some people uh, in the network that they've experienced coaching, may not have done coaching. Uh, mm. We were going to run a national coaching tour in a couple of weeks, but that's been thrown mm. up because we're not traveling at all. Uh, but we are moving the whole thing online. So you and Kathy, uh, Tuck, uh, Kathy Hurd, um, are going to run it on April 3rd mm. online. So if you're a planner and actually you're thinking through how can you maybe informally coach other people in your church network as well, or if you're a coach and you want to refresh, you can come to that. If you are a Geneva planter, uh, can I say it's free for you to come. Um, so you should you should sign up for that. That's April 3rd. What a bargain. Um, it yeah. is a bargain. It is a bargain. <laughs> um, Craig, thanks very much for your time. Um, okay. Pray for you guys at Scott. Give, give you the elbow. I'll give you the elbow, Derek. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you yeah. later. Good to see you, mate. Bye.